Hi friends, I welcome you all to the second part of the food irradiation lecture. We have seen in the first part that irradiation can be used in food for disinfestation purpose, for self life extension, for decontamination or for improving product quality. But there are certain changes that takes place into the food during irradiation process and that becomes an important very very important consideration as I told you in the earlier lecture as well that for optimizing the process that is for getting the objective of the process fulfilled we must ensure that it is not resulting into any undesirable change into the food characteristics and the irradiation is a called a cold process. It is a cold pasteurization or cold sterilization. It can accomplish the same objective as is done by the thermal pasteurization and sterilization processes. The irradiation has very little or no change in the physical appearance of the food there are no or very minimum or nil textural or color changes in the food. However, there may be some chemical changes into the food and that may if properly not taken care of these chemical changes may result into the off flavor, it may result into the softening of the fruits and vegetables or such other problems. So, it becomes important that is the chemical effects of ionizing radiations to see and as you will all hope I hope that you will agree that is this ionizing radiations they are capable of initiating a vast array of chemical changes in all the systems like in the gaseous system, in liquid system as well as in solid system. And in fact, even a summary of the all the changes is very, very difficult in this half an hour lecture, but I will try to give you that important aspects of that particularly with relation to changes in the food quality and its characteristics. So, there are two important things here important considerations here that is one is the radiolysis of the water and the other the effect of this ionizing radiations are macromolecules like protein, carbohydrate, lipids etcetera and other components of the food like vitamins and enzymes. Radiolysis of the water that is effect of ionizing radiations on water that is these ionizing radiations they split or which is more technically called radiolyzed water. And since most of the foods are aqueous systems, they have less or more amount of water present in this. So, this effect of ionizing radiation on water is of key importance. The passage of ionizing radiations through water results in the formation of intermediate like excited water, it results in the formation of free radicals like hydroxyl free radical or hydrogen free radicals. It may result in the formation of ionized water molecule or even hydrated water molecule. Now, these species that is these intermediates which are formed due to exposure of the ionizing radiation or food to the ionizing radiations or water to the ionizing radiations, they can react among themselves as well as they can react with other food components of the system, other components of the system. And if it is a pure water where only water molecules are there, there are no other micro molecules etcetera, then these interaction among these uh, intermediates may result into the formation of hydrogen gas, hydrogen peroxide, water molecule again, hydronium ion 
and hydroxide ion and so on. So, obviously, those intermediates as well as these new compounds which are formed like hydronium ion, hydroxide ion etcetera all these things, they can again that uh, catalyze or influence several reactions into the food material, they can interact with the other components of the food and that is the numerous possibilities may be there. That is almost every class of the food constituent like carbohydrate, protein and other nitrogenous compounds, fats and oils, vitamins, enzymes, pigments, what not. They can all react by at least with one or the other of these intermediates to produce new intermediate compounds and many of which are highly reactive themselves. Even the oxidation reactions may take place, free radical reactions may take place, reduction reactions may take place right? and these becomes important and as they may influence, they may have important influence on the food characteristics. So, this is was one that is effect of ionizing radiations on water and then it is further effect of that on the other food constituent. In addition to that, these ionizing radiations they can also have the direct effect or influence on the hydrocarbon chain. Many food have the hydrocarbon chain like lipids etcetera all right or in many polymers like packaging material etcetera. So, the direct action of ionizing radiations on these hydrocarbon chain also becomes important. Okay. There is a number of primary events can occur. Most important event is the abstraction of hydrogen that is uh, from the hydrocarbon a hydrogen radical all right can be abstracted all right a free radical and so the hyd hydrocarbon free radical is formed and this hydrocarbon free radical which is formed again it can undergo a very large amount of reactions among which those involving reactions with atmospheric or dissolved oxygen and cross linking reactions etcetera becomes important. <coughs> then deamination, oxidation, polymerization, decarboxylation all this have been implicated in protein changes during irradiation. Reactions of protein exposed to uh, irradiations have similarities to those caused by organic peroxide etcetera. In both the cases that is the free radical of uh, proteins can either cross link or recombine with hydrogen or result in season that is depending upon that there may be a transfer of molecules or cross linking etcetera. So, this in this diagram you can say that oxidation as well as free radical mediated pathology that is a processes as far as the effect of uh, influence of energy radiation on the. So, again large number of compounds there are possibilities that is the, there may be a large number of compounds which they ha have several effect on both that is on the food, food constituent and even on the surrounding environment. Apart from that that is they have effect influence on lipids that is lipids including fats many of the reactions are akin to the oxidative rancidity type reaction peroxidation by molecular oxygen even various radiation specific reaction can also take place there. Carbohydrates are also very sensitive to radiation oxidation reaction predominate as well as some condensation reaction similar to non enzymatic browning may also take place and it has been suggested some in the some literature there are certain reports that some products of irradiation of sucrose even may have some toxic effects on the cell. So, we can summarize that effects of irradiation on food constituents that they radiolyze water, there will be formation of peroxide or hydroperoxide about half of the cysteine that is 50 percent of the cysteine may get destroyed during irradiation, about 10 percent of the tryptophan is lost, there may be development of oxidative rancidity, pectin 
is degraded which may cause softening of fruits and vegetables and even higher doses can cause off flavor because of the formation of the carbonyl compound, volatile constituents, hydrocarbons etcetera. So, obviously there should be some means to minimize these effect because in optimization of the process our main criteria is that we should have that minimum effect on these constituents. So, obviously you have seen that there is since there is radiolysis of the water is one major causative factor. So, we can minimize the effect by lowering down the water content because if the water content in the food is less then there will be less radiolysis of the water less free radicals will be formed all right and then the free radical initiated or mediated reactions will be stopped so one best way or better way of irradiating the food is that to reduce to dry it all right before irradiation and then irradiate in the dried form then less aerobic conditions because if the oxygen is present in the environment then this uh, oxidation reactions etcetera may be that peroxide formation and other reactions may take place which may result into the development of off flavors of colors etcetera. So, obviously, if irradiation is done in the less aerobic conditions and the food irradiated food if they are kept in anaerobic environment. So, it will help in preventing of flavor and of color associated reactions. Reducing the temperature that is the you have seen that the how this uh, uh, irradiation in the frozen state all right, influences that and it gives a better quality because the sub freezing radicals are immobilized free radicals take play major roles here. So, irradiation of food in the frozen state is considered to be a better approach. Then addition of free radical scavengers that is also depending upon the type of the food in the system particularly if the liquid system etcetera there are powdery system then some free radical scavengers can be added into the food all right or chelating agents can be added into the food and which these metal ions and etcetera they can or other free radical they can bind with them and then stop them for free radical initiated chain reactions and all those processes and of course, that simultaneous distillation is another suggested mean, but it has to see that operational things has to be ensured that is this uh, helps in the removal of volatile of flavors or of flavor precursors etcetera in the process. Okay. So, after having done that let us see now what are the different uh, applications that is for what purposes, major purposes this ionizing radiations can be used and as you could see it has a vast ranging application in food processing. It can be used for different purposes in different food right like that is for sterilization of the army ration or stabilization of the other food making the food room temperature stable that is one in fact in many countries this irradiation is being used for sterilization of the army ration or sterilization of the ration to be given in to the hospital patients etcetera. Okay. And obviously, here the microorganisms etcetera are killed and food is made self stable or room temperature stable. Another application as we also discussed earlier is the extension of self life of various foods which are normally distributed or transported or stored at refrigerated temperatures. Particularly perishable foods like fish, poultry, meat, fresh fruits and vegetables, milk, egg, cheese all these things are such material it is desirable that even their fresh counterparts they should be transported under refrigerated conditions or even sold under refrigerated conditions for quality regions right. So, here there is one this whole refrigeration setup can be eliminated that is the these foods they can be exposed to irradiation treatment and can be made room temperature 
stable without any significant loss and influence on the quality factors. Then irradiation can be used for treatment of water and food processing waste. An interesting application in this respect is the treatment of cooling water for fish and board ships. And by this that if that is the for the transport of the frozen fishes etcetera that is the for this purpose for the water is used for their cooling and for transportation in the ship that is by maintaining the microbial count in this water at a low level without heating the water it should be possible to retard deterioration of his prior to the time of their delivery for subsequent processing at the harbor. <coughs> Other possible area or very good scope of application of this irradiation is the disinfestation of food grains or dyed fruits. In fact, the insect infestation one is one of the major cause for spoilage of the grains or for spoilage of the several dried fruits etcetera. So, these commodities insects they are very very sensitive comparatively much sensitive to ionizing radiation just by giving a few hundreds or few thousand rates of ionizing radiation these insects can be killed. So, very interesting application. Then inhibition of sprouting onions, potatoes etcetera like such vegetables when they are stored at room temperature for longer period. So, after some time due to their own ongoing physiological process they sprout and this sprouting is in fact is major problem in such fruits and vegetables limiting their self life. So, although there are chemical methods for control of sprouting, but these chemical methods invariably they influence the flavor and other they bring about other changes etcetera into those respective food. So, here ionizing radiations becomes a very good source that is the for inhibition of sprouting in these materials and only just a few thousand jodi small dose like about 15,000 rad etcetera is required and the chemical effect under these conditions are also very negligible or almost nil. Then another very interesting effect is the delay in ripening of the fruit that is it can that is if the fruits and vegetables are other uh, that is the fruits particularly they can be exposed to required dose of radiation and their ripening can be uh, uh, that is delayed and their self life can be extended and in fact uh, that is there are many fruits like uh, mango and other things they are even commercially treated by irradiation and they are shipped or transported to some countries and for the. So, ripening of the fruits can be delayed by exposing them to the desired level of irradiation. Then another very very important uh, or interesting application of ionizing radiations in the vegetables or fruits is in the irradiation of dehydrated vegetables. In fact, when these dehydrated uh, vegetables that is using thermal means and other means when they are dehydrated the major problem is their rehydration because the reconstitution properties are not very good in the dehydrated vegetables of course, depending upon the process CBRT etcetera. So, here those dehydrated vegetable products if they are exposed to even little smaller dose or comparatively even lower dose of this uh, irradiation, then this irradiation results in the season of the polymer chains as you have seen that effect on the polymer. So, it ca may cause breakage that is the longer polymers may be broken into smaller ones and this uh, contributes this effects to the structure of the vegetables and even this season is beneficial in accelerating the rehydration or it improves the reconstitution properties or rehydration properties of the uh, these dehydrated vegetables. Then 
another interesting application of this uh, for irradiation may be in the for the accelerated aging of scotch whiskey there is the freshly produced or freshly fermented whiskey etcetera they do not have the desired flavoring characteristics and the aging is a very important step in their manufacturing process in fact they are stored for sometimes for several years to get the desired flavor in the whiskey so those in fact during this aging during the storage the there is secondary that is the mellowing or ripening which is called of the whiskey that is it flavor is improved or characteristic so that process what you can do what you one can get after storing of the whiskey for several years just it can be obtained in comparatively lesser time by exposing them to ionizing radiations so that aging of the whiskey a pro aging process for the whiskey and such other materials can be greatly accelerated by exposing them to the ionizing radiation so one thing comes in almost every consumer's mind that is how wholesome these irradiated foods are in fact in some of the countries still the consumers are not very much convinced about that uh, safety or wholesomeness of the irradiated food so when we talk about wholesomeness of the irradiated food how wholesome there are at least three considerations number one effect of these ionizing radiations are on induction of radioactivity number two that effect of these irradiation treatment on the nutritive value of the food and then third and most important one the induction of any toxicity or carcinogenicity of the so we will take up these three aspects briefly all right as far as the induction of radioactivity is concerned this hartman equation can be used to measure the how much radioactivity that is q is the radioactivity in micro micro curie that is how much will be produced into the food material after its uh, irradiation that is a constant d is the dose of radiation in mrad e is the energy of radiation given to the food n is the decay constant and t is the half life of the radioisotope formed so using this equation one can uh, measure that uh, induction of radioactivity and of course the induction of radioactivity in the food may depend on different factors like for example type of the radiation used and its energy level the dose of the radiation given to the food and the abundance of any specific elements in the food which can uh, initiate uh, which can cause further more induction of the radioactivity or which can accelerate or decelerate this process in addition to these factors even half life of the radio isotope produced is also important because if the half life that is of the isotope which is formed is very short then one may consider that it the isotope may disappear before reaching the to the consumer so this isotope may be present in the food but it may disappear before the food reaches irradiated food reaches to the consumer so it has been this aspect has been thoroughly debated debated and it has been found that uh, irradiation of the food with gamma rays with the x rays up to energy value up to 5 mev and electrons with energy value up to 10 mev are comparatively safe there is no induction no reported induction of radioactivity in this food the other influence is on the nutrient losses we have already seen in the details that is the effect of chemical effects of these ionizing radiations on food nutrients carbohydrate protein fat and other components water so on so it may obviously depending upon the process depending upon the dose given etc it may result into some destruction of nutrients all right and 
of course, there are certain means also we have already discussed that these how these losses and the, and the nutrients can be minimized okay, and better to irradiate the food either in the dehydrated form or in the frozen form all right, because irradiation in the frozen state greatly reduces the loss of vitamins and there is the exclusion of oxygen which protects the fat molecules even radiation sensitive vitamins and some oxidation susceptible amino acids. <coughs> Though third aspect regarding the production of toxic components or carcinogenic components in the irradiated food or during food irradiation. And in this respect there is I think there is no hardly any other physical food preservation method which has received such a severe test in this regard as irradiation has been. So, this process of food irradiation has been put to thorough scrutiny by various researchers by various regulating entities throughout the globe with different countries and of course, the studies have been conducted in this respect and after all the data which has obtained in such studies indicate that there are no acute toxic effects or obvious danger of chronic toxicity or carcinogenicity provided the process is used meticulously and with the proper energy levels right and processes are properly optimized. So, under optimum conditions. So, the process has to be used with caution that becomes an important aspect. Okay. So, advantages of the food irradiation we will briefly describe it may result in the minimization of the food losses, improve public health, it can increase the international trade, it is an alternative to fumigation of food grain, it Increase, increases energy saving that is the food irradiation processes are less energy intensive and that you can see here in this slide like that is the by eliminating pathogenic microorganisms or parasites the it removes or reduces the possibility of the toxicity and other things from the food and so public health that is health foods uh, that is why it is used even sometime it is used for that uh, production of that uh, health foods and other components and uh, sterilization of that uh, foods. Then of course, minimizing food losses like delayed ripening, sprout inhibition, this infestation etcetera. So, that is why the huge losses is normally occurs in the food perishable foods, grains etcetera that so, this has a great potential for minimizing food losses the alternative. So, like grains etcetera that is a common process is the fumigation and this many times like chemicals like methyl bromide, ethylene di bromide or ethylene oxide etcetera and they are used for fumigation of the grains and other materials to extend their self life or to kill insects and many of these chemicals are sometimes many a times are toxic right. So, they should not be used or they are not permitted. So, here there is this influence of these toxic chemicals are use of this toxic fumigating agents can be easily replaced by a even lower doses of right. Then energy savings here some data in the literature says that there were some studies comparative studies for utilization of energy in different process like canning, refrigeration, canning, refrigeration, then frozen storage and refrigerated and irradiated. So, in the case of canning 20,180 kilojoule per kg energy involvement is there whereas, in the refrigeration and frozen storage this respective figures are 17,760 or around 46,500, but in a food which is both refrigerated and irradiated 
the total environment is there just around 17,860 kg. So, it results in the energy irradiation of food basically the data shows that it results in energy saving. Another important aspect because of the obvious effects uh, that is the <coughs> there should be proper labeling that is the irradiated food should be properly labeled and in fact, FDA requires that the irradiated food bear this uh, Redura label that is this is the sign which has to be compulsorily put on the irradiated foods and of course, in addition to this side that is the some the packet should state or label should state that treated with irradiation or treated by irradiation or so irradiation like that. And of course, in addition to that FDA many countries have their own regulatory requirement for food irradiation for labeling requirement or the that is the persons who want to use this facility who want to establish irradiation facility they need to take permission from the <coughs> these uh, regulating agencies. Of course, are in many countries there is no statutory requirement specific to irradiation right. So, in fact, there are many countries where it has been legalized food irradiation of course, in some countries still there is consideration, but overall this process has a great potential for use and application in food processing industry. And here in this again picture taken from the literature just to show you the effect how this you can see here that uh, strawberries that is the after harvesting just after 5 days of harvesting and then irradiated and then after harvesting and then stored. So, picture after 5 week, five days and after 3 weeks. Similarly, strawberries 25 days after treatment and storage at 3 degree Celsius it is the one is the control the other is the irradiated 1 kilo gray, gray and the other is irradiated with 1.5 kilo gray and you can see the effect. Similarly, even I think it is the sugar cane stock. So, <coughs> 36 days at 34 degree Fahrenheit and then after they are irradiated and again are 30 after 36 days and at 34 same temperature you can see the difference in the freshness and other attributes. So, obviously, this becomes a very good it has a great potential for application in the food processing industry. So, it now concludes that the food irradiation is a better non thermal mean and novel technology and it has a vast potential wide potential for application in food processing for various useful purposes. However, the process should be used with caution it should be appropriately designed and one should have that is even the facilities should be well constructed and it should be made sure that there is no there is a adverse effect of the process on the food constituents and its sensory and other characteristics. Thank you.